What's going on, A-Push Peace? We have a very good video for you today. This one is on abolitionism prior to the Civil War. So we're talking antebellum America. We're going to cover a lot of abolitionists today. Before we begin, it's shout-out time. I need to give a shout-out to Mr. Zwolinski's class from Rochester, Michigan. Mr. Florzik's class in Freeburg, Illinois. Mr. Schneider's class. Mr. Schneider, your students think you're the nicest human being on the planet. And Mr. Burns' fifth period class at Warwick Valley High School. Thank you all so much for your support. Best of luck this year. You're awesome and you will do great. All right, early abolitionism. Throughout most of early American history, abolitionists primarily consisted of a very small portion of the population. If you're an abolitionist in the 1700s, Chances are you were one of the you belong to one of the following three groups. You would be a free African American, a slave, or a Quaker. Those were really the main abolitionists in the 1700s in the 18th century. Colonization was a big goal early on in the abolitionist movement. Prior to 1830, many politicians supported colonization efforts of former slaves in Africa. This included people like Henry Clay, Chief Justice John Marshall, and Daniel Webster. In 1816, the American Colonization Society was founded, and it called for gradual emancipation, so slowly freeing slaves, and movement of these former slaves to Africa. And Liberia, this country of Liberia on the west coast of Africa, was established as a place for colonization. Its capital is Monrovia, named after President James Monroe. Okay, now we're getting into some abolitionists. We have David Walker. He was the creator of an appeal to the colored citizens of the world. And he wanted to mobilize blacks in the abolitionist movement. He was a harsh critic of colonization. And he used the Bible and Declaration of Independence in his writings as a criticism of slavery. Nat Turner and his famous rebellion. This led He led one of the largest slave rebellions in history in 1831, a very important year. And as with virtually all slave rebellions, slave codes became more strict afterwards. Nat Turner and about 100 people were killed as a result of this slave rebellion. William Lloyd Garrison was the creator of the Liberator the same year as Nat Turner's rebellion in 1831. And this weekly newspaper was published until 1865 with the passage of the 13th Amendment, which outlawed slavery. And this newspaper called for the immediate and uncompensated end to slavery. What that means is he wanted slavery to end now, and slave owners should not be paid to give up their slaves. He was against colonization, and he criticized the Constitution because it was complicit with slavery, due to things like the Three-Fifths Compromise. Frederick Douglass was a former slave from Maryland. He was an incredible orator supporter of women's rights, and a staunch abolitionist. He was the creator of the North Star, and he had a very famous speech, which you should be familiar with. And if you're using the fill-in-the-blanks guide for this video, I have an excerpt from it. His speech was known as the 4th of July speech, and it starts off by saying, What to the American slave is your 4th of July? It is a very powerful, great excerpt, something that could be seen on the exam as well. Lydia Maria Child published an appeal in favor of that class of Americans called Africans from 1833. She advocated immediate end of slavery without compensation, just like William Lloyd Garrison. And she believed that women's rights and abolitionism were intertwined. This is very important to know that many women who were abolitionists were also women's rights advocates. Theodore Weld was a minister that preached throughout the North the evils of slavery. And he argued that slavery was a sin. And he was instrumental in reshaping the movement away from gradual emancipation to begin discussing immediate emancipation. This gradual emancipation was a very big idea in the 1800s, and he really helped shift that discussion more towards immediate emancipation. Henry Highland Garnet escaped from slavery in his youth, and he advocated slaves to rebel to achieve freedom. He was a member of the American Anti-Slavery Society, and the founder of the American and Foreign Anti-Slavery Society, which came later after the American Anti-Slave Society. The American Anti-Slave Society from 1833 to 1870 saw 250,000 members nationwide, and several African Americans served on the board of directors, including Theodore S. Wright, a co-founder. He attended Princeton Theological Seminary, and he was a conductor on the Underground Railroad, so he helped slaves escape from the south and he used religious arguments against slavery also 
Okay, John Brown, you know him from the Potawatomi Creek Massacre in 1856 in Kansas. But what he's most known for is his raid at Harper's Ferry in 1859. He hoped to inspire a massive slave rebellion. It did not occur. And he and his followers were killed or put to death as a result of this. They were caught in this increased tensions between the North and the South. This is a cause of the Civil War. So the South was afraid that many more people in the North were like John Brown and would inspire slave rebellions. Notice that this is 1859 and the Civil War starts in 1861. Okay, the Underground Railroad was an organization that helped slaves escape. Conductors were people who helped lead slaves to safe houses. Harriet Tubman helped over 70 slaves escape, including her parents and herself. She was a former slave. And although the number of slaves that escaped was small, it was a very powerful symbol, the Underground Railroad, that was loathed by the South. So it gave a lot of hope to many slaves. Okay, definitely know this slide here, the abolitionist methods. There are three different ones that the AP curriculum states that you should be familiar with. One of them is moral arguments against slavery. That's people like Douglas, Garrison, and Weld. Some use violence, such as Nat Turner and John Brown, and others helped in the assisting of slave assisting slaves escapes and that includes the underground railroad and harriet tubman this to me is screaming a short answer about different methods used by abolitionists to help end slavery all right for test tips multiple choice of short answer identify and describe different tactics used that's what we just went over documents douglas's fourth of july speech is a great one and for essays this could be part of sectional tensions prior to the civil war all right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Best of luck this year. And I look forward to seeing you back for another video. Have a good day.